Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. In this show, we're going to talk about injuries sustained during martial arts practice or using your martial arts outside of practice. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is because I sustained quite a bad injury uh, last weekend. And what I did was I tore the muscle from shoulder to neck in my left on my left side, um, doing my job. Uh, as a doorman, throwing people out who were trouble from the club I work in. And this person was a big Russian, and I grabbed hold of him, and he dived onto the floor and took my arm with him, and it tore all the muscles. And I've been in agony ever since, and now it's a week later. Things are starting to turn. I can lift my arm, but I'm operating one-handed. And, and it was quite a bad injury. And after having had checked at the hospital, there's nothing they can do about an injury like that. The same with broken ribs. There's nothing they can do. Now, they used to strap them, go, uh, ribs, but they don't do that anymore. Now, any kind of torn muscle, ligaments, tendons, really, really can put your training back months and months. I mean, you don't lose anything. Um, you don't forget anything. Uh, maybe your fitness suffers a bit but and your timing, but you'll get that back very, very quickly. But the thing is to look after an injury. Don't go back too soon. Now, it's almost impossible to avoid these kinds of injuries. But there are other um, places you can get hurt, such as when training. Now, obviously, a lot of self um Self-defense people, they don't warm up because they say that warming up is not a thing you would be able to do if you're attacked in the street cold. So they train that way and they risk injury of muscles, tendons, ligaments, everything. But that's the way they train. But most martial arts, uh, though they carry on as sports as well as the martial side, um, they do warm up, they stretch, which is a really important thing to do. Oh, they warm up properly, they do laps, they do push-ups or press-ups, sit-ups or crunches, everything, um, warm-ups and calisthenics to get before they start, which is always a good thing to do. And you've got to always make sure that in your club you have a really good self, um, well, first aid kit, a really good comprehensive one, because otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to help anyone if of all you've got in there some plasters. Any injury should be treated seriously. You shouldn't say, oh, don't grow up, get up. Every injury should be treated seriously because it could have long-term effects upon your training and your daily life. Now, this injury I've got will get better, but, you know, I can bet you it will be weak, weaker than it was before, no matter how much I train because of the... Uh, Injury it is, you know, tearing muscles is a terrible thing. Now, sports oriented martial arts, usually the instructor is first aid trained so that, and insured, so that you can get the best care at the scene. I mean, all kinds of sprains, knees, hips, ankles, you know, even toes, fingers, all that kind of thing, especially when you're doing things like body hardening, um, you know, you're doing multiple reps on heavy bags, and you need the proper care. I mean, a lot of that is on you as well. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to make sure that anything you do, you're fit enough to do. If not, then you have to build your fitness doing other things before you get to that stage. You know, it's common sense, really. I mean, I'm not going to talk about specifics, just generalizations, really, because there's no point in me going through the anatomy and physiology of the human body. You can do that in your own time. You know, it's an easy thing to do. I mean, I went back to college and 
did courses in anatomy and physiology purely because um, I was doing the martial arts so that I know about the body. Um, it's easy, really. Night school, um, you can do courses over the internet, you can go back to college like I did. You know, simple, really. Just simple. You just need to find the time. People say they can never find the time to do anything. You can. Of course you can. Stop doing something else and find the time. So in any kind of martial art, you need to watch your muscle, your tendons, your ligaments, because one attaches muscle to bone, one attaches muscle to muscle, and you really need to make sure that you're taking care, you're warming up properly or not, and that you're uh, making sure your body is supple and ready to do the training. Now, when I did the Japanese martial arts, you would spend a third of the lesson warming up and getting your body ready to do the martial art itself. I mean, I hated it sometimes. It was boring, but I'm glad I did it. You know, we exercised everything and warmed up everything from toes to fingers to ankles, knee joints, hip joints, your back, your stomach, your neck, even face massage. You did that yourself. I mean, and in Tai Chi, when I did Wu-style Tai Chi, but we did that all the time, and we would drink um, all kinds of tea during the lesson, jasmine tea, etc., uh, for a healthy outlook and a healthy body, as well as a healthy mind. So, you know, every martial art has its way of doing it, but you must take notice of it. It's, you don't, can't just go into the gym and start steaming into the bag or each other. You've got to think about your health, your body, because, you know, if you don't look after your body, your mind isn't going to look after it for you because you need to look after it. You need to look after both, mind and body. It's one of those things, it may be boring, but you need, you really do need to do it. Okay, moving on. We had our gradings um, a couple of weeks ago and we now have three new maesters and three new provosts in our English martial arts we're really proud they're really really up to scratch they really know what they're doing and they can teach really well so i'm happy i've just re-released um my books plus a new one um, the new one is called self-defense advice you can get that on lulu you can get them all on lulu uh, the other is the other is the short stick and the other one is senior self-defense which is aimed at more elderly people because Everybody needs to know how to look after themselves, whether they're elderly or children. Of course, a lot of the stuff I do is weapon oriented, so that's the the way I've written the books. I give a lot of advice in them. Um, I talk about the principles of English martial arts and plenty of other things as well. So, I mean, you don't have to buy them. You can have a, a preview, I suppose, on Lulu. So have a look there. Really, really good. And my grandson has just started karate, and I'm really, really pleased that he's doing something. I mean, for people and kids, karate and judo and things like that are great, really, really great. When they get a bit older, they can move on to the more sort of street-orientated martial arts, um, such as the, the one I do and the kind that many other thousands of instructors teach. But, yeah, karate and judo for... New, new beginners and stuff is a great way to start uh, your martial arts uh, life. See, I, I don't script my podcasts. I don't write anything down. Everything I talk about comes off the top of my head as I'm talking, although I have a theme before I start. I mean, most people say, yeah, we know, we can hear it. But, you know, one of those things, you need to be able to talk off the top of your head so that people understand you know what you're talking about. I mean, anyone can write a script and make themselves sound like a genius. But, you know, you've got to be able to do it off the top of your head because you've got to know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, and going back to the gradings, we have our first American ancient maester and our first ever female American provost, which is the best thing ever. It's just really great that the English martial arts is moving on. We're not stagnating. We're not standing still. We're moving forward, and what we do is organic. We just keep on going. I think it's because we don't get involved in politics. I mean, I used to. 
I used to go on Facebook and wind everyone up, but I don't do it now. And it was funny at the time. I've gone past that stage now, and uh, I'm just into trying to focus on where we're taking our art. And the only way is forward. Okay, let's carry on with the theme of the actual podcast, which are injuries during training or outside of training. Now, the martial art I train in, the English martial arts, deals a lot with weapons, and it can be really dangerous depending on how you train. Now, if you watch our videos on our YouTube channel, English Fighting Arts, you'll see that we rarely use much armour, if any at all. Now, there's a lot of groups that would scream and cry, oh, you can't do it that way. Well, you can and we do. And we rarely, rarely get injuries. And there's only one reason why that is, because our instructors and our students are properly trained. They have control. And the reason they have control is because we make sure that we drum it into them. Being a martial artist isn't just about hurting people. It's about training yourself and your mind. And that brings control. So they really hurt each other. I mean, I have been hurt. As an instructor, it, it's very easy to get hurt by uh, beginners. And I've been whacked around the head with sticks, stabbed in the face with a bloody sword, um, you know, hit with quarter staffs. Every one of them hurt. Everyone caused an injury. Uh, but that, I accept that as a as an instructor. But once you've drilled them and drilled them and they've gone through techniques and they understand completely the principles of the system, then control comes. And that's why you see us doing things without armor. Although we are fully insured for this. So, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, the types of injuries you can suffer in the martial arts through weapons are sometimes quite horrendous. I mean, of course, you've got um, HEMA, the Historical European Martial Arts. And, you know, there's a lot of work with longsword, more longsword than anything else, although it's not something we concentrate on. But the longsword is quite a phenomenon in HEMA, so they use that a lot. And they have lots of safety gear. Uh, they do look like the Michelin Man sometimes, but... You know, if that's the way they want to roll, that's up to them. Um, the only thing I would say is that you've got to balance it between injury and armour because armour will give a false sense of security. So you've got to try and have as little as possible. Um, even when you're using steel weapons, you know, because, I mean, a steel weapon will break bones as will a quarter staff or a cudgel, wooden weapon. But, you know, they've got an edge to them. Uh, it may not be sharp, but it's sharp enough. And they can break bones. So you need to make sure that your instructor is competent to train you and that he teaches both body and mind uh, training as well as control. So, you know, when you're out looking for an instructor, make sure that they can demonstrate what they teach at full speed, so that you know the man or woman is competent in what they're saying and what they're doing, and they can do it safely, okay, safely. I mean, after all, we've all seen that story where the uh, student is suing the HEMA instructor because he thrust the sword through his eye and into his brain. What kind of instructor has that kind of, Control. In fact, there's no control there whatsoever. There's no judgment of distance at all, which is a very important thing in any kind of fighting art. You know, judgment of distance between you and the person you're uh, fighting or sparring with or teaching is one of the most important things you can have. Because if you haven't got judgment of distance, then you're going to injure everyone or you're going to be so far out of distance it looks ridiculous, you know. And that comes with proper training and rigorous, rigorous training, uh, hours, thousands of hours of training. Now, your instructor doesn't have to be the best fire. That's not what it's about. 
What it's about is being competent enough to pass the information over to you in a safe way that teaches you to be safe also. Simple, really. You know, walking around, trying to be, I don't know, if you're into Oriental martial arts, trying to be Bruce Lee or Jet Lee, just silliness, silly, silly. Uh, and trying to be D'Artagnan or, I don't know, William Marshall in the heme of thinking you're, you know, you'd be great back in the day, you know, grow up. If you're doing a martial art, you're doing it not so that you can fantasize about things, so that you can use a practical martial art, whether it be for competition or where it matters the most, defending yourself and your family. So that's it for this episode. Bit boring, I know, rambling on about nothing, but that's it for this episode. And hopefully next time, in the next episode, there will be another weapon-orientated episode on the English martial arts and the weapons. So, thank you for listening and thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please tune in next time and subscribe and leave um, a review for me. It really helps me. Um, Thank you. And hopefully, you'll listen in next time. Listen to us, because we listen to you. 